Hello and welcome to another episode of Lakeside Reflections here on Heavenward Thinking. Today we're continuing on in Acts chapter 27, the second part of what we did last week, and we're going to be in the subtitle part, The Storm. So I'll read it and we'll get right into today's discussion. When a gentle south wind began to blow, they saw their opportunity. So they weighed anchor and sailed along the shore of Crete. Before very long, a wind of hurricane force, called the Northeaster, swept down from the island. The ship was caught by the storm and could not head into the wind, so we gave way to it and were driven along. As we passed to the lee of a small island called Cauda, we were hardly able to make the lifeboat secure, so the men hoisted it aboard. Then they passed ropes under the ship itself to hold it together, because they were afraid they would run aground on the sandbars of Syrtis. They lowered the sea anchor and let the ship be driven along. We took such a violent battering from the storm that the next day they began to throw the cargo overboard. On the third day, they threw the ship's tackle overboard with their own hands. When neither sun nor stars appeared for many days and the storm continued raging, we finally gave up all hope of being saved. After they had gone a long time without food, Paul stood up before them and said, Men, you should have taken my advice not to sail from Crete. Then you would have spared yourselves this damage and loss. But now I urge you to keep up your courage, because not one of you will be lost. Only the ship will be destroyed." Last night, an angel of the God to whom I belong and whom I serve stood beside me and said, Do not be afraid, Paul. You must stand trial before Caesar. And God has graciously given you the lives of all who sail with you. So keep up your courage, men, for I have faith in God that it will happen just as he told me. Nevertheless, we must run aground on some island. So, Garrett, as we look at the second part of this story, what strikes you uh, as as the narrative starts to change in in this passage? Well... Uh, and this is an original thought. I read some commentary on this passage, and I think it's spot on, though. Paul, in this situation, is like the mirror, the, the exact opposite of how Jonah behaved. Mm. Paul is willingly going to where God has told him to go and, and, and go through what he's supposed to go through, what God wants him to do. And on this journey, it, it, you know... Jonah knew the blame was on himself and he hid under the deck. Paul tells these guys, hey, this is on you because I told you, but he doesn't hide below deck. He stands in and in, in gives them instruction and gives them encouragement. It's mm. like the exact opposite of the Jonah story. Absolutely, <laughs> for sure. And we've covered that story before here and we, we went into detail on that and how he was trying to run away from what God had called him to. And this is, as you mentioned, the total opposite where Paul is confident. He knows what he has to do. He has to go stand trial in front of Caesar so that he can proclaim the gospel there and stand testimony to Jesus Christ. And, and so he is so confident in that, that he is doing the very opposite of Jonah. He, he's willing to be bold, willing to take charge here. And he, it, I love how he has the I told you so moment in this of you men should have listened to me. I tried to tell you this, but uh, now you're going to lose all the cargo. You're going to lose the ship. But he he tells them that, that the angel of God told him that they're not going to die. None of them are going to die. So he has that confidence in his God. He has that faith that we all should have. And he reminds the men of that. And he's able to take charge in this situation and get them pointed towards hope instead of despair. Because earlier in this passage, it talks that they they gave complete uh, hope up. They they no longer had any hope of being saved. And uh, how different that is at the very end when we see Paul's confidence in Jesus and in his faith that he's able to bolster the faith and encourage these men. How can we do this in life? How can we avoid uh, falling into the Jonah trap and take the path of Paul here? Uh, I think be confident in what you're being called to do, mm. uh, what your what your spiritual gifts are, um, and how you are to serve. And obviously, we don't always get that right but it's 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 like a feedback loop right Hmm. like like you do what you can you persevere um you stay you stay faithful to to god's commandments you um do what you're uh supposed to do in terms of how scripture calls you to act whether you're in a role of a husband a wife a child a teacher a student a worker and that and and then you know you correct course as you need to but it's you know staying faithful through the the times of blessing and and also through through the times of trial absolutely make sure that we're doing what god has called us to do and then how taking that a step further how can we come alongside people like paul is here in this 
uh, in this story. How can we come alongside people, maybe who don't even know or, or profess a faith in God? How can we come alongside people and encourage them to have faith in our God and to be encouraged and have hope when, when everything looks like a state of despair, like these men were facing shipwreck? How can we do that? Well, I think if we go back to the, the last segment that we did here, Paul basically told those guys that, that God had given him a revelation that it, it wasn't going to be a good journey and they might want to think about not proceeding. Now he doesn't get all bummed out and say, oh, well, these guys aren't listening to me anymore. I, I shouldn't I, I shouldn't give them the same word that God has given me because they didn't listen the first time. Mm. He 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 trusts that, that God has given him a word and God has put it on his heart to, to tell these these folks what is going to happen. And, and he does it. You know, he doesn't hold it back just because they they blew him off the first time. And I think mm. we can apply that. You know, as as we preach the gospel, we're we're not always gonna um, get a warm reception on that. And and it's not about that. You know, it's it's about preaching it in season and out of season more than it is like oh it's not going to be well received here or it wasn't well received here once. I shouldn't preach it again. Mm. Just. Just keep preaching it and, and let the Holy Spirit do do the legwork. Mm -hmm. I, I love what you said there. I think as Christians, a lot of us uh, get disappointed and discouraged when we try to share our faith with people and they don't receive it right away. We just are so longing for people to immediately, as soon as they see that we're a Christian, go, oh, yep, I want to be a Christian. But we need to realize that that's not what happened in Scripture, so it's not at, at times it did, but not uh, a lot of times. And it's going to happen that same way in, in our own experiences. Not everyone is going to jump right away into and believe in God because we say, hey, this is a word from God, or, or we say something from Scripture. Sometimes it's going to take that constant trying, that, that constant reaching out in faith, asking God if he would help us in that situation so that we can reach people. But just believing that God is going to do something, whether or not it looks like anyone's going to ever listen to us. And, and Paul, as you mentioned, he did that here. He remained confident in his God, in his faith, and he remained confident in the ability of God to work in the lives of these men, even though they totally blew him off before and they totally didn't listen to him. So I think as Christians, you, you brought up a great point. We need to keep trying, keep being faithful with the message. Uh, we know that the word of God is not going to come back void. So when we share that with people, we need to have faith that God's going to do something in the lives of those around us, even when it looks like they're just continually living in hostility toward God. So, so we need to have that faith in God uh, to keep doing what God has called us to do, as you mentioned earlier. What else can we get out of this section as, as Christians in the 21st century? I think there's a lot to be said about how as the storm rages on, you see them throwing things overboard. The tackle the ship, the cargo, uh, and I think there's something in there for us, you know, when we face trials, and, and I really think you know, God ordains trials for us. Mm. Um, he, he, he's not mean-spirited, but he lets trials come upon us to sanctify us. And in, in a lot of respects, we're, we're like a ship, you know, when, when things are good. Sure, it's nice to have the extra tackle and the extra cargo, but when things get rough, we really need to pare it down to mm. just the essentials. And that's when we really learn to lean on Christ mm. it, it, is when things get rough and we realize all all this other stuff is is great but it's luxury mm. you know so I, I think that's in there for a reason in that in order to weather storms in order to come out we have to we have to focus on what's essential and that's christ that's the gospel that's um other people you mm. know they nobody got thrown overboard in this that's another aspect that's mm -hmm. different from jonah so you know cargo um, extra sails or whatever else they threw over would be nice to have on a ship in fair weather. But when it comes down to surviving the storm, you, you got to prioritize uh, what stays on board and what's important. Absolutely. And I, th I think that's one of the things God does when we go through the trials, right? He, he uses the trials to teach us that we need to rely on him, not on all the other stuff. Like you mentioned, all the luxury items. It's great to have a, a great life, to have great possessions and things. And we can use all that for, for God's kingdom for sure. But there are times where God just uses the trials uh, to pare us down, as you said, to what's really important. And that is 
our faith in God, our belief in God, our understanding who he is and who we are called to be, and then other people, as you mentioned, the people that we're supposed to be reaching as Christians. Uh, and so I, I love how you, you put that in perspective for us. If we take nothing else out of this story, we need to realize that God wants our attention in life. And so he'll use the trials, he'll use the difficulties of life to get our attention, to get us focused, to have our perspective on him, on Jesus, rather than on all the other things, all the other luxuries that we would love to enjoy joy, uh, all the things that, that are blessings from God that then we worship instead of God. And as this story shows, it's really about having that faith in God, and he's going to carry us through the storm, not any of the other things in the storm. Uh, so thank you for that re reminder. Well, we hope that you've been challenged and encouraged by this story and that you'll join us next time for the, another Lakeside Reflections here on Heaven Rethinking as we continue this story. <laughs>